I'm going to show you how I make my Captain America coaster. Ooh. Oh, well, actually it's this one. <laughs> um, when making this pattern, I actually ended up stumbling upon this one. So I'm going to show you both the circular and the angular version of this coaster. Circular one sort of reminds me of the shield, Captain America shield. This angular one, though not a shield, it does look, would be really cute for like bunting. And the shape is this sort of neat. I have no idea what that shape is. You know, circles and squares and triangles. And I think I fell asleep during that preschool class. This was originally inspired by a blanket that I made my nephew about this time last year. Yeah. And there's a video that Tim did on his vlog that uh, sort of shows the video. I also have a, or the blanket, I also have a thing on Perky Lemon if you want to look at it. But uh, it came out really pretty. And I got a lot of good feedback from the interwebs and everywhere else on it. What made that pattern so... Um, neat after it was done was the detail that whoever made the pattern thought of when putting into the star. What I liked about her pattern was that not only was the star crisp, so there was no stitches sticking into it, it also was a part of the, the whole thing. It wasn't sewn on afterwards, so it made it lay really, really smooth. So with thinking of that, um, I wanted to apply those type of things, those attributes to the coaster also. Um, I had a lot of trouble. <laughs> I did a lot of I did a lot of experimenting. I uh, for several days straight, I just made stars and stars and experiment after experiment, all the things, all the things. And eventually, I got came to something I sort of liked. Actually, I very much like it. Um, I'm happy with it. So, and I hope you're happy with it too. And that's what I'm going to show you today. The difference between these two isn't a lot. So as I make the round one, the round one's what I'm going to be making today. I will show you the deviations to make this version. It's not a lot, it's not a huge jump from here to here. So I will show you both as I go. I'll finish this one, um, but I'll show you how to get to this one as we go along. To make this pattern and uh, for the demonstration, I am using a yarn called I Love This Cotton. I've used it before on my channel. It is a Hobby Lobby specific brand, 100% cotton. It's very soft and honestly I don't use this for a lot of kitchen projects because of how soft it is. But for a coaster, uh, it works okay. It actually works pretty well. Typically for kitchen projects I like to use like a lily or something a little more sturdier. But when trying to make this pattern with lily, it makes the pattern look become much bigger because it's a thicker structurally sturdier yarn so you need to go with something a little thinner um, and that's why I chose I love this cotton if you have the time to wait for shipping or you're already buying stuff from them uh, you might want to try instead to try a um, paint box which is so cute <laughs> if anything try it because you get these little things in the mail um, <laughs> uh, this cotton uh, the paint box, specifically the paint box cotton Erin, is the same thickness as the I Love This Cotton that we're going to be using today. So you won't have to really alter the pattern that we're about to go through. You can just do it as is. It's not quite as soft as the I Love This Cotton, but it is um, stir a little sturdier than the I Love This Cotton. Not quite as sturdy as the Lily, so, and definitely not as thick as the Lily, but not as soft as the I Love This Cotton. So it makes a project where it's a little bit smaller, work really well. And I really like it. it. It works really nice, the stitches are very defined, and it comes in all these cute little pills <laughs> when you get them in the mail. I, uh, the first time that I, um, I ordered these, I got a whole bunch of them because the colors are just, they have so many colors and they're so pretty. And I got them in the mail and they were so super cute, I refused to use them for like eight months. I like it, I love it, but they are super cute to get in the mail. Be warned. Um, anyways, but today uh, we're using I Love This Cotton. The colors I'm using, um, the blue is called Dark Denim. It is number 306. And it does look like, it looks like a pair of jeans. It doesn't necessarily, it looks shinier on the camera than it does in real life, but it looks like a pair of jeans. The red I'm using is called Burnt Sienna. And in the camera, it looks like red red like candy apple red in an actual real life because I'm not gonna cut recolor this it looks more like pepper like uh, cayenne pepper and then white 
To begin the star, whether you're doing the rounded or the pointy one, uh, the first thing we need to do is the star. So to begin the coaster, the first thing we need to do is the star. To begin this project and to make your star, we're going to need to start with a magic circle. Now, a magic circle, they're very handy. And if you don't know how to use them, they can be very frustrating. A lot of people describe the magic circle, and I think we all describe it differently. And most of us try to make it out to be uh, harder than it is. So I'm gonna show you how to do my version of the magic circle. If it is confusing, I encourage you to look at someone else's tutorial on it because it took me like nine or 10 times of watching different people do it to realize what it actually was. And it, as soon as I had one person describe it to me in a way that sort of clicked in my head, I was like, oh. <laughs> I got the slip knot. Okay, why didn't I say it to begin with? But um, when it, it, you'll just have that moment, that click moment, that you're like, okay, now I get it. And so, at least I hope you do, because you know it, you can get away with not using a magic circle in most in most patterns. You can chain and connect the chains, and then work your stitches inside the chains, or um, do all your stitches in your first your first stitch and make it loop around. But in both of those instances, you'll have a hole. Hold on, let me, I bet I have one. I don't, because I don't do it. Um, you'll have a hole in the middle. And for some patterns, that works great. Um, but in other patterns, like this one, you want it to be closed. So I encourage you, if the, if, if the way I'm about to do it doesn't make sense, then check out some other people. Eventually, it'll click, and you'll be like, oh, I got this. And then you'll have all kinds of patterns you can do. All right, but this is how I do it. So, oh. Shoot, before I, before I even go in, besides the yarn that you'll need, you'll need, um, for my pattern, I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook, letter E. Um, the one I have is from uh, Clover, more. I like them, they feel good on my hand and they're inexpensive, and thus I tend to grab these a lot. And then you also need some snips. These are Fisker snips, you can use any snips that cut yarn and then a needle. This is how I, Okay, so this is how I like approach the magic circle. I take my yarn and in the hand I'm gonna be holding my crochet hook, I'm gonna grab some yarn and I'm gonna twist my hand towards me where my thumb comes towards me. And it's gonna cause the yarn to sort of twist into a loop. And then using the hand that's going to be holding my yarn, I grab and pinch the yarn where those two pieces of yarn meet. If I've done this correctly, the small tail, which is the this the end part of your tail, or end part of your yarn, will be closer to you, and the long piece that's attached to your yarn ball will be farther away from you. So long piece is farther away, little piece is closest to me. From here, I take my crochet hook, I insert it into the loop, I then grab my yarn, pulling through the loop, and pull up just a smidge. Once it's through the loop and back to, um, on the other side, grab your yarn again and pull through the loop that was on your hook. And that's your magic circle. To test to see if your magic circle was done correctly, just give the little tail a tug and it should uh, make this circle, this loopy area, get smaller. And then you can tug the circle also and pull it and it should be easily get bigger. See, done. Da -da -da. <laughs> All right, so now we have our magic circle. And once again, if that was confusing, rewatch it. If it still doesn't work, check out someone's video, come back. One, it's, one of us is going to make it in a way that it's gonna be, you're like, oh, okay, now I get it. Yes, <laughs> this is how it's gonna work, I promise. All right. So, when we went ahead and locked in our magic circle, we're gonna count that as a chain. And um, to continue forward, we're gonna go ahead and chain again. So to do that, we're going to take your hook, grab your yarn and pull through the loop that was on your hook. And that creates another chain. So you have one, two chains. 
And the reason we did that is we're sort of prepping our circle now in order to start for our stitches and we needed to bring our chains up to the height of the stitches that we're going to creating. Now for our first row, which is going to be sewn into or crocheted into that loop, we're going to be doing five sets. And in each set there's going to be three double crochet, so double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, and then a chain one. So we're going to first do our first double crochet. To do a double crochet, what you'll need to do is take your hook, wrap your yarn around your hook, bring your hook down into this loop from your magic circle, push your hook back out through the other side, grab your yarn, pull back through to the front, and when you do that you should have one, two, three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn, pull through the first two loops, and now you have two loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through the remaining two hoops. And that was a double crochet. Let's go ahead and do that again. Wrap your yarn around your hook. Take your hook and bring it down into the loop. Pop your hook back out the other side. Grab your yarn, pull through. You should have one, two, three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn, pull through the first two loops. Grab your yarn again and pull through the remaining two loops. Alright. Okay, let's do one more double crochet. So wrap your yarn around your hook. Dip your hook back into the magic circle. When it pops back out the other side, grab your yarn, pull back through. You have one, two, three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn, pull through the first two loops. Grab your yarn, pull through the next two loops. Okay, so we've now done a total of one, two, three double crochets. To complete this set, we're gonna do a chain one. So grab your yarn, pull through the loop that was on your hook, and there's your chain one. Now we're gonna repeat that four more times. So we have a total of five sets of three double crochets plus a chain one. All right. Once you've done five sets, you sort of can see them since of that chain one that we did. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Go ahead by pulling that small piece of yarn, give it a gentle tug, and it should close that ring. Don't pull it too tight because what we need to do now is we need to attach the part where we just finished, where our hook is at, to the beginning area. And it's a little easier to do if you have a little bit of give on your magic circle. Go ahead and take your hook and we're going to do what's called a slip stitch. We are going to slip stitch into the very first double crochet we made. If it's hard to tell on your stitches where your double crochet is at, go ahead and start where that space is. And the first stitch that's underneath one of the actual stitches, not the space, but the first top part that's underneath a stitch, start there and go one and count backwards. One, two, three. Number three should be where your slip stitch should go. Go to do a slip stitch, go ahead and take your hook and insert it under those first two loops on the top, your front loop and your back loop. Grab your yarn and pull back through to the front and then keep going and pull that loop um, through the loop that was on your hook. Once that's done, go ahead and grab your small tail and then give, in my case, a big old tug. <laughs> I think I need to be strong. I need muscles for crochet. <laughs> Once you give it a nice little tug, it should close. It may open up a little bit while you're crocheting. Um, and you can stop that from doing that by going ahead and sewing in your piece of yarn to like tie it off. I like to wait a little bit until I get a couple rows in just because in case I like mess up and I need to pull my stitches and start over. But that is up to you.
And if it does loosen up, no big deal. You can always just re-tug her. <laughs> and uh, close it up again. All right, but that is our first row. Now, from here, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be um, crocheting into that space that was created. So before we did the double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, and then a chain one, we're gonna be putting almost, almost, not all, but almost all of our stitches into that chain one space that was created in each set. And the, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing stitches that sort of increase in height to make a triangle shape and then decrease. And then, go, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and then we're going to do that for each of these star spikes. To get started, we're going to go ahead and do another slip stitch into the stitch that's right next to where we're at. Go ahead and insert your hook into that stitch where you have both the front and back loop on top of your hook. Grab your yarn, pull through, and pull right on through, through the uh, loop that was on your hook. And so there's our slip stitch. Now we're going to start by putting two double crochets into that space from that chain one space. So go ahead and grab, wrap your yarn around your hook, insert your hook into that space. Once it's out the other side, grab your yarn again, pull up. There's three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn, pull through two. Grab your yarn, pull through the last two. That's your first double crochet. Now we're gonna do it again. Grab your yarn around your hook. Insert your hook into that space. Grab your yarn, pull through. Pull through two. Pull through two. And that's your second double crochet. Now we're going to do a stitch called a triple crochet which is very similar to a double crochet, except that instead of wrapping our yarn around your hook at the beginning once, you're going to be wrapping it around your hook twice, which will add one more step at the end. So let's walk through that. Wrap your yarn around your hook once, then twice. Now go ahead and insert your hook back into that same space that we've been working in. Once your hook's out the back, grab your yarn and pull through. And when you do that, you should have four loops, one, two, three, four, on your hook. Go ahead and grab your yarn, pull through the first two. You should now have three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through the next two. You have two loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through the remaining. And that is a triple crochet. From here, we're gonna chain three. So grab your yarn, pull through once, twice, and then three times. And now we're gonna go back down our triangle side. So we're gonna sort of go in reverse. We're gonna start with a triple crochet, and then we're gonna do a double crochet, double crochet. So here's our triple crochet. Wrap your yarn around your hook twice. Still working in that same space. Put your hook down into that space. Grab your yarn, pull through. You should have four loops on your hook. One, two, three, four. It may curl around your hook because of those chains. Sort of wiggle it around to make sure you still have your four. One, two, three, four. Grab your yarn, pull through the first two loops. You should have three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through the next two loops. You should have two loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through two more. Now we're gonna do a double crochet. Now as a reminder, the double crochet, you're only gonna wrap around once. So wrap your yarn around your hook once, insert your hook down in that space, grab your yarn and pull up. So you should have three loops on your hook, one, two, three. Grab your yarn and pull through the first two. There'll be two loops left on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through the next two. Let's do that one more time. Wrap your yarn around your hook once. We're still working in that space. Put your hook into that space. Once it's out the back, grab your yarn and pull back through. Grab your yarn and pull through the first two loops. Grab your yarn and pull through your remaining. 
Now to finish off our triangle point, or our star point, the last thing that we need to do is to slip stitch. And we're slip stitching into the middle double crochet from the previous round. If you remember, in the previous row, we did three double crochets, bonk, 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 and then a chain. We need to insert our hook and do a slip stitch into that second double crochet. And it's a little tricky because one of the double crochets is actually hidden now by all of those stitches we put in the previous space. So the easiest way to make sure you're inserting the slip stitch in the correct area is to look for the next chain space and then count two. So here's the chain space. Beep, 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 beep. And if we count backwards two, we have one, two. That's the one you want to put your hook into and do your slip stitch. So we're going to insert our hook, grab our yarn, and then keep pulling through, through the loop on the hook. And that's our first triangle corner. Now we're going to repeat that in each of the spaces. You've already made your, your slip stitch, so we're going to start straight with the double crochets. We're going to do two double crochets, and then a triple crochet, chain three, triple crochet, double crochet, double crochet, and then slip stitch into the middle, sti the middle double crochet from the previous row, and we're going to repeat that for all to make all five triangle points. Once you have five points, then check back with me and we'll attach it and go to the next spot. Once you get to this spot, we're going to need to go ahead and slip stitch into the original slip stitch. The easiest way to find it is to once, in, once again go backwards. So if we start with the point to our left, start with that triple crochet. We know that we did a triple crochet and then a double crochet, a double crochet, and if we follow where that stitch is connected, that should be our slip stitch, and that's where we're going to be connecting where our hook is at. So go ahead and take your hook and insert it into that stitch. It may be a little rough because there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, let's push her on through. Grab your yarn and pull back through to the front, and then go and keep going and pull it through the loop that was on the hook. And we've now closed that row. You can see that that's starting to open up a little bit. Let's give her a tug if that's the case. Close it up. It might be obstinate, but that's how yarn is and is obstinate. Brat. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Once that's closed, we're now going to make a bridge on the back of our piece. And you can sort of see that from this finished one here. I'll put it under the under the GoPro because <laughs> I'm all sophisticated. I got a camera over here. I got a camera over there. Um, we're going to make this sort of chain bridge area on the back side of our star. And what this will allow us to do is it actually will allow us to stitch the rest of our stitches straight into the star without having to stitch like into the actual star itself and make it look muddy. To do that we're going to do a variation on what is called the back post single crochet. I know that's a lot of words but it's not quite a back post because stitch because we're not technically stitching into the post but we sort of are. I'll show you. Um, and it's, it's the, one of those things like in crochet and everything else that's just trying to sound more complicated than it is. I went ahead and just made a little disc, a yellow disc, like a practice disc, to show you what I mean by this. And to show you how to do that, I'm going to first show you how to do a single crochet because we haven't even went there yet. So let's first start with that. To do a single crochet, what you would need to do, it's very similar to your slip stitch. I had the hiccups, I apologize. But um, take your crochet hook and insert it into the next stitch. When it's out the back, grab your yarn, pull back through to the front. You should have two loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through. And that's a single crochet stitch. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to do something very similar to what we just did, but 
uh, the, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be entering in from the back and we're going to be working around the stitch. So to do that you're going to take your crochet hook and from the back you're going to enter in and bring your hook to the front. But then you're going to wrap your hook around and put your hook back to the back. Now when you do this make sure that you're not working in this space down here. So you want to be working up here in the actual like where you would typically crochet. So you want to be right underneath your back and your front loop and you still want to have that third loop underneath it. Don't go in this space here. Make sure you're up there. If you're in the right, once you're in the right spot, wrap your hook around this little piece that's there and bring it back to the back. Grab your yarn and pull back through to the front and keep on going straight to the back again. From here you should have two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and pull through both. Okay, let me show you, show you that again. Entering in from the back, you're going to slide your hook right underneath your those first two loops, the front loop and the back loop. Immediately once it's in the front, wrap your hook into that stitch right next to the next stitch basically and push onto the back, grab your yarn, pull through to the front and continue immediately straight to the back. When you have two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and pull through both of those loops. Okay, one more time. Entering from the back and you'll notice that you're going to be putting your crochet hook into that small little space where there's already a piece of yarn from your previous stitch there. That's okay, that's what you're supposed to be doing. In insert your hook, bring it to the front, wrap your hook around and insert into that next space, bringing your hook to the back, grab your yarn, pulling through to the front and pull immediately back through to the back. You should have two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and pull through. And that is whatever that stitch is called. I, I can't think of, it's not quite a back to front because you still are working through, for ease of use, we're gonna call it a back to front single crochet, even though you still are working around that top bit of that post. So maybe, me a upper, how about that? An upper back, post single crochet. Oh, that's what we're going to call it. An upper back post single crochet. Upper back post single crochet. Someone tell me what it is. But we're going to do those on our start. So, going back to our start. Whatever that stitch is actually called, we're calling it our upper back post single crochet stitch. <laughs> Tongue twister! We're going to be doing that stitch on here to make our little bridge area. We're going to start with the first double crochet from the previous round. So using your hook, you're going to start from the back, you're going to insert it into that space, making sure that you're not working in that long, that space that's created in between the two stitches, that big, big space. You're looking for that little space at the top. So insert your hook right underneath that front and back loop, immediately wrap your hook around into that next space that's created. Grab your yarn, pull through to the front, and immediately keep going to the back. Making sure you're not going to pull through accidentally on the loop that was already on your hook. Grab, once you have two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and pull through. And we're going to do that again, starting from the back. We're going to insert our hook into that space, um, to that next space, and immediately. Bring our hook back around to the back. Grab your yarn and pull through to the front, pulling through to the back. So you have two loops on your hook. Grab your yarn again and pull through. One more time, starting from the back. You're gonna insert your hook, making sure you're not using that big space, but the little space towards the top. Wrap your yarn 
in, in this case, you have that chain three space. It doesn't matter where it is. There's only one spot there to wrap. So wrap your hook back on through to the back. Grab your yarn, pull on through to the front, immediately go back towards the back. When you have two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and pull through. When you get, once you finish that stitch there and you're left with your space area, chain one, so grab your yarn, pull through. And now we're gonna do those top back post single crochets, <laughs> Woo! all the way down each side making sure to chain one when you get to the space. Now when you do each side, you're going to end up with a total of seven top back post single crochets um, because you're going to do the three from your stitches, your one triple crochet, your two double crochets, so triple crochet, double crochet, double crochet. You're going to want to do one around that slip stitch that you made and then do one around your double crochet, double crochet, and your triple crochet. So if we do this, here's our, we're gonna do one around your triple crochet. So that's one. And then one around the double crochet, two. Around one of the next double crochet, three. Then around that slip stitch. Now it'll be a little tricky because it doesn't necessarily have um, the two upper loops and then that third loop. Just make sure that you do your stitch just around that little bit that's there and you should be fine. So that's four. Now we're going to do one on each of the double crochets and the triple crochets. So five. Six. Seven. And then chain one because we're in this space. And then repeat that until you come to the very beginning again. Okay. So once you've went to each point, and you can see it's starting to look more like a star now. You get done with your triple crochet and your two double crochets. Re don't forget to do that slip stitch because if you remember the first time we did one of these on this row, it was actually with the first double crochet. So be sure to do your slip stitch or to do the top back post single crochet around the slip stitch. And then from there, go ahead and give yourself a little bit of extra room, cut your string and tie or uh, weave in your ends. Weave on. I've got so many of them. All right. From here, you have your first choice. Um, we're gonna be using our blue and you can, you need to make your decision now whether you want it to be really super clean edges but you want it to pop up a little bit remember it will make your your pot holder um a little wappy jawed if uh, or not pot holder coaster coaster if you want to go set something down on it it might not be even or you can have it more flush to your piece but it won't be as crisp that is your choice um for my total project, I'm going to do the a little more flush just so I can use it <laughs> as a coaster because I really need coasters. Um, but I'm going to show you both. We'll start with this one, the one that pops up more. To do this, you'll need to go ahead and grab your blue yarn either way. And we are going to do stitches similar to how we made our bridge but in the reverse. Okay, I have my little practice disc here and please excuse all my little extra ties in. Um, for this next area, to show you the clean, the very crisp edge, we're gonna be doing front post stitches um, around that bridge that we made. And specifically, we're gonna do a front post half double crochet and a front post double crochet. 
it's not that tricky if you think about the name. It's not a variation like we did before. It's truly a post stitch. Um, so if you think front, meaning we're going to enter from the front of the stitch, post means we're going to wrap our hook around um, the long part of the stitch, the post area is what that's called. We're going to bring our hook back around and then we're going to do our stitch, whether a half double crochet or a double crochet. So let me show you on our practice disc. And I went ahead and did some, I, in, I put some single crochets around the edge because that's what we're going to be working with on our star. So to do this, we're going to start, I'm going to first show you a half double, a front post half double crochet. To start, we're going to do like any other double, half double crochet. You're going to wrap your yarn around your hook once. Now you're going to insert your hook from the front because it's a front post. And as soon as you in insert your hook, you're going to wrap it around that post and bring it to the front. From here, go ahead and grab your yarn. And now you're going to pull it back through to the back. And then once you're back there, immediately come back to the front again. And you should have three loops on your hook. Now this is a half double crochet, and we haven't done these before yet, but they're very similar to a double crochet. The only difference is instead of just pulling through those two loops, you're going to pull through all three. So grab your yarn and pull through all three loops on your hook. And that is a front post half double crochet. So let's look at, let's look at that again. Wrap your yarn around your hook once. Insert your hook into your stitch and immediately wrap it around that post area. Once to the front, grab your yarn, pull through, and keep on pulling through to the front again. You should have three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through all three. And that's your front post half double crochet. Now we are also going to do something similar to that with the double crochet, front post double crochet, except we're going to do a double crochet stitch. And if you're comfortable with this on the practice one, we should be able to work through that double crochet stitch on the actual piece. So let me put my practice bit aside. I'm actually going to put it down here because I think we're done with it and it's <laughs> getting tangled quickly. I've got too much yarn on my table. Mm. I'm not working, used to working with yarn on the table. I like to have it down in a bucket somewhere and it just gets tangled up up here. Anyways. Hmm. Okay. So let's start with our thing. Now, whether you are doing the this version with the points and making the clear, or you're doing the part where it is sewn into the, it's flatter, we're always gonna start right after the first chain space. So here's the chains, remember, are always on our, I keep hiccuping. The chains are at all of our points. So go ahead and find the first stitch, um, or just find that chain area. Sorry, excuse me. And we're gonna cast on, so grab your blue yarn, insert your hook in that space created by the chain. Grab your yarn and pull through, and just do a chain, just like one chain there. All right, just to attach it. If you remember previous, we made seven stitches all the way around with our bridge. And now we're gonna be doing stitches around that. And what we're trying to do is trying to round out and start our circle. Um, so to do that, we're gonna sort of increase our stitch length on the bits that go into that indentation and decrease when we get to the top parts. So we just grabbed our, put our yarn onto our chain space. And now we are going to go down this slope and come back up. First stitch we're going to do is a half double crochet on this first single crochet from the previous round. And so wrap your yarn around your hook. Go ahead and insert your hook in that space where you just cast it on. Wrap around the post from that single crochet, bringing it to the front. Grab your yarn, pull through to the back and immediately come to the front. You should have one, two, three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through all three. 
at your first front post half double crochet. Now we're going to do a second one. So wrap your yarn around your hook, insert your, knee, your hook into that space right before that next stitch. Wrap your hook around the post for that stitch. Grab your yarn, pull through. Coming back up, you should have one, two, three loops on your hook. Pull through all three. Once again, we did a front post. That was a front post half double crochet. All right. For the next three stitches, we are going to do front post double crochets. So wrap your yarn around your hook. Insert your hook into that space. Now remember, you're gonna, you'll see that y your yarn, your blue yarn in that space too. That's okay, that's from the previous stitch. So insert your hook. Immediately wrap your hook around that post, bringing it to the front. Grab your yarn, pull through to the back and immediately come to the front again. You can have hair everywhere. You have one, two, three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through the first two loops only. You have two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and pull through the next two loops. And if you have if you're shedding and you have your hair, pull that out too. <laughs> My hair gets in everything. It's all over. It's going flat. Alright. Okay, that was our first front post double crochet. So let's do another one. Wrap your yarn around your hook. Insert your hook into that space. Now remember you're gonna have yarn in that space from that previous stitch. That's okay, because we're working on that next post. So insert your hook. And as soon as it gets to the back, wrap it around that post and bring it to the front. Grab your yarn, pull through, and pull back through through the front. You should have one, two, three on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through the first two. Grab your yarn and pull through the next two. Right. Let's do it again. Wrap your yarn around the hook, insert into the space. Wrap around the post, bring back up, grab your yarn and pull through, bringing it from the back, back into the front. You should have one, two, three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through the first two, grab your yarn and pull through the next two. Now we're going to finish off this side by doing a, half, a front post half double crochet in the next two posts. So. Wrap your yarn still around your hook. Insert your hook into that space, wrapping around the post. Grab your yarn and pull through. You should have three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through all three. That was the first half double crochet. Let's do the second. Grab your yarn, insert into that space. Wrap your yarn around the post. You sort of pop your, your hook into that space created from your chain before. So then grab your yarn and pull back through from the back all the way to the front. You should have three on your hook. One, two, three. Grab your yarn and pull through. From here, you want to go ahead and finish off this side by doing a single crochet uh, into that uh, chain area that we made from the previous row. So insert your hook into that space. Grab your yarn. Pull on through, grab your yarn again, and pull through both. That's your first side. See how clean that looks? Now to finish this part, go ahead and repeat that, doing seven stitches down the side, where it's a half double crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet, and then in the chain space, do a single crochet. And that'll give you this raised star with the really clean edges. You can see how that's starting there. All right, uh, so this is what it looks like once you have your stitches done around each side. It doesn't look like a perfect circle, but that's okay. It'll get more circly as it goes out. So that was option one. And this allows for that nice, puffy, sticky up star. Option two is very similar and it's gonna be the one that I'm going to be going with to finish out my project. 
It is, we're going to still do the same stitches. We're doing the half double crochet and the double crochets around each side. The difference is instead of doing a front post on each one, we're just going to do a regular one. We're just going to do a standard half double crochet, half standard um, double crochet, and then of course the single crochets. What this will allow it to do instead of it being raised up a little bit, um, it will lay a little flatter on your piece. So let me show you. Like the other version, you want to start at the tip, the star point. Go ahead and insert your hook into that space. Grab your yarn. And just pull through and chain one just to sort of attach it on there. And we're going to do the same stitches, like I said. So we're going to do two half double crochets, three double crochets, and then two half double crochets, all in that bridge piece. And then on the chain area, we're going to do a single crochet. So to start, we're going to do a half double crochet. So I want you to go and wrap your yarn around your hook. And instead of doing the front post, we're just going to go straight into our stitch there. Like we do a regular half double crochet. Grab your yarn, pull through. You should have three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through all three. It's your first half double crochet. Wrap your yarn again. We're going to go down into that next stitch. Insert your hook into the stitch. Pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through. It's your second half double crochet. Now we're going to do three double crochets. So wrap your yarn once. Insert your hook into the loops. Grab your yarn. Pull back through. You have one, two, three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn. Pull through the first two loops. Grab your yarn and pull through the next two loops. And do that two more times. Wrap your yarn into your hook. Grab your yarn, pull through. Grab your yarn, pull through the first two. Grab your yarn, pull through the next two. Next one. Wrap your yarn into your hook. Grab your yarn, pull on through. Wrap your yarn through the first two. Wrap your yarn through the second two. So we're going to do a wrap your yarn around your hook. Insert into the loop or into your stitch. Grab your yarn, pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through all three loops. And then one more half double crochet. Wrap your yarn around the hook. Insert the loop. Grab your yarn, pull through. One, two, three. Grab your yarn, pull through again. That's half double crochet. Um, you have two half double crochets, then four three, one, two, three double crochets, and then two more half double crochets for a total of seven stitches down the side. Once you get to your chain one space, go ahead and insert your hook into the space and then do a single crochet. Now repeat that all the way around until you get to the end. All right, okay. So there is my second version where we did the stitches actually in like a typical stitch. You can tell that, see it's not as clean as this one, um, but it is flatter, which is sort of hard to actually tell on this. It looks like this one's, but it is in real life. <laughs> this one's flatter than this one. Um, so you sort of have to choose which way you would want to do it. I think this would smash down eventually. No guarantees. All right, from here, so that was your first choice. Now you need to choose whether you want it to be round or angular. This one's easier. The angular one is easier because what we're going to be doing either way is we're going to be increasing our stitches on each row to expand it. And to be allowed to allow it to be flat, we need to um, increase our stitches um, just a couple at a time, but in even increments. And depending on where you put the increased stitch, um, which is a stitch where you put multiple stitches in the same stitch of the previous row, it'll allow it to either have corners or be a circle. The corner one, um, all we need to do is start, make sure we start, um, at a corner 
for our first increase, our first row of increase. And then subsequent ones, we start the beginning of our pattern of stitches for our increase um, right after an increase from the previous row. So for example, um, we're going to use the poppy up one for this. And our next color is red. So I know that in the previous row I had a total of 40 stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 7 stitches and then an increase of 2 stitches. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start one stitch after the tip. So a stitch is like right at the corner. So I'm going to start one stitch after that because the way that I do my increases, I do my stitches first and then my increase at the end. So that should give you an increase right at the very top. So go ahead and insert your hook into the stitch right after the very tippy top. Grab your yarn, pull through, chain one. So I went ahead and grabbed my yarn, pulled through, chained one. I'm going to insert my hook right back into that same stitch. I'm going to grab my yarn, pull through. I have two loops on my hook, and pull through for my first single crochet. And now I'm going to do six single crochets down this row. So that was one. I'm going to do a total of seven. Sorry, six more. <laughs> two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. So it's seven single crochets. Now I'm going to do my increase, which is two single crochets. One, two. And now I'm going to repeat that. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and then one, two. And keep going. One, two, two. Now, since I'm going to do single crochets, I'm going to go ahead and do a second row um, of red to make that red thick enough. Um, on this version of my practice one, I ended up doing half double crochets instead. You can do that. If you do that, instead of doing a second row of red, you actually have enough thickness now. You can jump to your white and then continue on. Um, if you do single crochets, like here, two single crochet lines will give you approximately the same width as a half double crochet. The difference being is you can see how those teeth marks, like the zipper marks, they're more pronounced than in the single crochet. So um, it depends on what look you're looking for. If you're okay with the teeth marks, it actually goes quicker to do it this way. That is up to you. But since we're doing half or single crochets in here, I'll need to do a second row. Now, every time you increase a row, whether you're increasing um, single by and doing single crochets, or if you are using half double crochets, even double crochets, you're going to just increase the number of stitches between your increase by one. So in this previous row, we did seven single crochets and then our increase. So in this next row, we're going to do eight single crochets and then our increase. Now, since we are doing the corner version, we are going that it's actually going to be super easy on us because we don't have to think anymore at this point as far as where our our increase is going to be, particularly this row because we are just going straight into the same color. We just did an increase, so we're going to go ahead and do a slip stitch to join our row. There we go. And we're going to start our next row immediately. So you're going to do chain one, and now you're going to do eight single crochets and then an increase. So then you do. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, and then chain two. One, two. Or not chain two, single crochet two. <laughs> now we're gonna do eight again. One, eight, one, two. Now it's gonna curl up a little bit and that's okay. It'll actually flatten out as we go. And you can start to see that those corners are starting to be formed. From here, um, go ahead and tie that off. Sew in your ends um, and then proceed to your white and your red. With every row you do, you're going to increase the number of stitches in between your increase. So we just did eight. So the next one will be, you'll do nine stitches and then an increase of two. Then following that 10 stitches and an increase of two and then so on. So you wanna do two rows of white and then two more rows of red to finish that off. Now we're gonna move on to the white. The angular one is actually easier than the round one and when you do your increases because you don't really have to think too much about where you're gonna put it. All you need to do is find an increase. And remember the increases are near the points. So, and it's gonna be the stitch with two stitches in it. So here's an increase here. This has one, two stitches in it. So once you found your increase, all you need to do is start your next row in the stitch right after it. So this is gonna be where we're gonna start our row. I'm using white. It's going to grab your, going to cast on. So grab your yarn, pull through, chain one, and then start your single crochets. And our last time that we did this, we did eight single crochets um, and then our increase. So now we're up to nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now we're going to do our increase. One, two. Yep. And then keep going around. So that's your, there's the first row of white. Since these are single crochets, we want to do another row of white. And you can already tell how those little angles, those corners are really becoming defined. And all you need to do can, to continue that is ensure that you're adding one more stitch in between, in between each set of increases. So for the next one, you'll want to do 10 single crochets and then your increase and continue that with the red as it builds out. Now, um, when if you don't have to change a color, you don't even have to think about it. Uh, you just slip stitch and continue on because it will naturally be in the correct spot already. And then when you change colors, just make sure that you start your next color um, near one of these corners directly after an increase. So like here's an increase of two whites. So you would start it right after that in that next stitch. And as long as you follow that, you will have an angular piece. But now I'm going to show you how to do the round version, which is similar, but there's just a little bit extra you have to do to make it round. <laughs> All right. Plug you in, plug you in. Now we're going to do round version. And I think for the round version, just so you can see the difference, I'm gonna go ahead and do half double crochets because it goes quicker. <laughs> and you can see the difference either way. So it, the premise is the same. Um, instead of starting at a corner area, go ahead and start somewhere in the middle. Doesn't matter where. I'm just gonna grab a spot. And remember we did 40 and 40 stitches before, so we're going to do seven stitches. And then on the eighth stitch, we're going to do an increase. In this case, we're going to do half double crochets. 
So you're going to insert your yarn, chain it, just to sort of snug it in there. Since we're doing half double crochets, go ahead and chain one more time, just to bring it up to the right height. Wrap your yarn around your hook, insert it into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull through, and you have three loops on your hook, and pull all the way through. That's your first half double crochet. Now we are going to do six more. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we just did six more for a total of seven half double crochets. And now we're going to do an increase. So one, two, and go ahead and repeat that all the way around. So one, two. Okay. Now, these were our single crochet ones. And this is our half double crochet. It's not quite as long, but it's similar. It's very close. So, um, in, so in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and tie off the, um, the red and then move on to my white color from my half double crochets. Um, since, since I don't feel I need to do a second row of the white, of the red for the half double crochets. Unlike when I did the single crochets, I needed, I felt like I needed two rows to make it thick, wide enough for the pattern that I was going through. So let me go ahead and sew this in. We are, we are going to continue to add one more stitch on every row, one more stitch for the stitches in the in between each increase. So. Um, in this one we did seven because we were doing half double crochet, so our next one's going to be eight. Uh, the only difference is we are going to change where that increase starts. Um, because we chose to do half double crochets on the circle one, it's super easy because we're going to have to start our yarn anyways anywhere. So as long as you don't start it either on the increase or right before or right after the increase, from the previous row, you're good. You can put it wherever you want, <laughs> it don't matter. Um, so in this one, I, let's see, there's an increase there, so I'm gonna start my white row right here, I think, yeah. See, easy, easy, I like easy, 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 easy. It's reason like tens, reason, yep. <laughs> I, can go on to, I can go on a thing for tens. I won't today, but some other day I'll go on a, I'll do hats, I'll do tens. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled my string, or cast it on my string, or I don't know, my string's on my my thing. I did chain to lock it in. And uh, now I'm going to yarn, wrap my yarn around my hook, insert it into the stitch, grab my yarn, pull through, I have three on my hook. And I did my first double crochet. Now remember we did um, seven on the previous row, so now we are going to do eight total before we do our increase. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, uh oh, did that one wrong. One, two. So, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. And now I'm going to repeat that all the way to the end. All right, so finished my white row, um, and I went ahead and sewed in my ends for my white row. Now, to do this next row, um, we need to remember where we did our increase before. So if we look over here, our last increase was here 
in here. So let's see, there's an increase there. So we're gonna put our, I think I'm gonna start my increase over here this time. So I don't see any increases around there. So that's where I'm gonna start mine this time. So a couple of stitches away from the other one. I'm gonna do red, chain up two, and then do your half double crochet. Remember, in the first increase row, we had seven stitches between our increase, and our next row, we had eight stitches in between our increase. So on this row, we are going to do nine stitches in be between our increase. So uh, we went. I went ahead and chained up two, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my half double crochet. And some people would count that as a stitch. I don't like counting chains of stitches if I can get away with not, just don't like it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then two. That's then my increase. And then continue doing that all the way around. And then go ahead and don't sew your ends at the end. Just leave it be and I'll meet you there. So I made it to the end and you can see that it looks fairly circular. Um, I think it looks pretty darn snazzy actually. Whether you're doing the angular version, which I still haven't added my red in yet, but I will after the video. You guys don't want to see me do that. Same thing. <laughs> or if you're doing um, the round version, when you come to when you finish your last row of red, uh, you're going to want to sort of finish it off. And for this particular pattern, I like to do the reversed crab stitch with a reverse single crochet, which is a crab stitch. Yes. Okay. To do that. Go ahead and finish this row. Finish this row by inserting your hook and doing a slip stitch. Now, chain one. Instead of working counterclockwise, we're going to be working clockwise. And it's a little weird at first, but once you get a couple of the stitches down, it goes really quick. So. Once you've done your slip stitch and you did your chain one, we're now going to be working in these stitches back here. And the first stitch we're going to work with is this stitch right there. What I want you to do is drop your hook down and insert your hook into that stitch. Grab your yarn, pull through. So you have two chains on your hook. Grab your yarn and pull through both chains. And then repeat that on the next stitch. Insert your hook into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull through. And keep going. And at first it's gonna look terrible. It's gonna look bad. And you're like, I don't know what I did wrong. Um, but after you can, if you just keep going, it'll even itself out and just magically turns really cute. And just keep on going until you get to the very end and then sew in your edges. And then while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the angular one too, and then we'll have a chat. Okay. Talk. <laughs> I went ahead and finished up the corner one and I'm for a round one. It's funny the round one. So this is my this is my last like patterny samply one I made, this one. Um and this is the one from today. There is a difference in it in that, uh, two differences. One, I added an extra in my original, like, practice one. I added an additional blue row that while I was doing this one and showing you guys, I chose not to do, like, on the fly. And then two, um, this was with single crochet and this was with the half double crochet. You can see the, um, the, the little zippery pattern. For some reason, on top of that, when I was making this, I was crocheting a lot looser <laughs> than this. Depending on how your hands are feeling or what's going on, you could, same exact pattern, same exact yarn, same exact hook, you could make your patterns different sizes. Weird, huh? Anyways, but here they are from the ones that I um, 
that I made. If you want this bigger, increase your, maybe choose to increase your rows. Um, or you can do the two um, single crochets. Just whatever, whichever one you choose to do, just make sure that you're increasing correctly by adding one more stitch um, in between your um, increase stitches and you should be fine. <laughs> Anyways, hope you have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the pattern and I'll see you next time.